Hello everyone, it is Evan from The Trade Risk here on Sunday, November 29th, here with a weekend market recap video. We are first going to analyze the current market environment, we're going to look at some other markets, some leading sectors, individual names, and then we'll discuss some trade ideas heading into next week. We'll jump into the action straight away here with the SPY ETF, and not a whole lot changed this week. On a weekly chart, you can see we moved 12 basis points in the SPY, so really a pretty dull week, all things considered. The only, uh, the only interesting day was really Tuesday. And if we zoom into the charts here, you can see that we're in this larger range that we talked about last week from 202 up to about 211.50, which are the swing lows and swing highs from the previous couple of weeks. And now we're starting to tighten up a little bit in here, right around this 208.50 to 209.50, almost a one point range right now. And it's and, and the placement is near the upper end of this larger term range. Now, the interesting day was Tuesday and we gapped uh, a, a reasonably lower, a half percent, one percent lower on Tuesday, but the buyer stepped in, bought that dip, and then we continued to just sort of mull around here up against this 209.50 to 210 level here of resistance in this cluster of recent highs now from the past week of trading. So I think what we have now is a upper level sort of pivot to work against. So if you're on the long side, if you are constructive on this market, I think the lows from Tuesday is a good line in the sand to use for that upper level momentum hold, you know, to gauge that upper level strength. I think if you're bearish on the market, well, I think Tuesday is also important because this pivot low, if we take it out, I think that's when you can start to be more aggressive, perhaps taking shorts, perhaps trying to trade again back down to the lower end of this range, if, if that's sort of where you your head is so I think that's a that's a good line in the sand to use now for, uh, for for support and I think on the upside well we're bumping right up against it so I think a strong push above this these recent cluster of highs so 20970 get back above 210 effectively and start clearing back above 210 I think that's your next sort of momentum uh, all clear signal on the long side to maybe try and build up some more exposure, take some new longs, um, you know, so on and so forth, depending on your trading strategy. So I think that's sort of where, uh, you know, where the broad market is for the S&P 500. Again, in the, in the intermediate term range, this swing high up here right around 211.50, that's the next level that we want to keep on watch is to retest that. And then, of course, we have the all-time highs not too far above that from the SPY earlier in the year. So that's sort of where we are. We're above all the fast-moving averages. Intermediate trend is higher, higher lows and higher highs. We're trying to get there. And uh, that's sort of where we are. And again, going into a sort of seasonally bullish um time of the year I think reinforces sort of the bull case. We have a lot of sectors starting to work uh, and support this market. So we're seeing some supporting breath now. And I think that all things considered that is constructive. So that's where we are with the SPY. The IWM the small cap index, this did have changes this week. If we look at a weekly chart, this was up 2.5% this week, just about. And I think this is where we need to start to pay attention. We are now above this previous pivot swing high here, right above 119.30. And this is constructive. So now we are in this... Uh, potential setup now to start making higher lows and higher highs and we already are doing so you can see here if you take the low from 107.50 and if you took this high here at 118.90 this is a higher low here at 114 and now we're starting to make a higher high so the trend is changing now in the small caps and that's something to take notice it's early the trend the trend is changing and it's in the early sort of stage right now so you probably still have a lot of non-believers in this uh, potential rotation back into the small cap. So I think this is a prime time to sort of take a close look here at the small caps and recognize uh, the shift in character that's happening right now. Again, it's not out of the woods. This is 120 level has been a tough spot. This has been a uh, inflection area for this market for quite some time. There's probably a lot of overhead supply around 120. So I don't think it's off to the races, but I think this is very constructive here for the market heading into the year end. If we look at the queues, not a whole lot changed here. Similar to the SPY, just kind of danced around, didn't do a whole lot. It's 
it's up near these recent highs around 115 it's got to take that level out to start making new 52 week highs new new highs on the year and that would start to be very constructive there for the queues new multi-year highs really so that's sort of where we are i think um, a glass half full you got to be still constructive on this market they, it is holding up across multiple indices, and um, I think uh, it's it still uh, speaks to be long this market, not all in, but at least have a piece of this market I think is still the best way to approach it. Now, if we get into some other markets here, we'll start with the TLT, the bonds. You can see still a very, uh, not an interesting market to me, still continue to feel that way. You get this swing low down here right around 118. You get this swing high up around 125 you know, uh, it's, it's just going to dance around in that range. Just doesn't look too interesting to me one way or the other. If we get into USO, this is a market that continues to struggle to catch its footing, although for commodities, it is holding up, uh, you know, decently relative to a lot of the other commodities out there. It is trying to potentially hold here at what could be a slightly higher low double bottom from late August. But again, you do want to keep in mind that the intermediate term trend is lower. There's overhead supply here at many levels above pr price. The fast moving averages are above us, so you do want to be very cautious here if you are trying to play on the long side. Natural gas continues to just break support. It continues to trade in this downtrend. Still no reason to be long this market. You should be short or you should be avoiding it. Same thing with the metals now, breaking through multiple layers of support. Once again, gapping below uh, a multi-day lows here, right around 102. We're making new 52-week lows. So really, the bottom line is you want to be short or avoiding this market. There's just better spots to look for to get long this market. Got to get back above at least 104 and a quarter or so. That would start to be a little more constructive in gold. Same thing with silver. It's not breaking down as much, but still trying to hold up here, uh, but looking really weak. It needs to get back at least above 1375 or so to start to look a little more neutral. Otherwise, I think you still want to avoid this market or trade the short side in the metals. Now, if we look at some leading sectors here, actually, I think it's easier just to look at the lagging sectors. I think really there's two here and XLE is one of them. It's just not really participating. It's still a little beaten up. USO still continues to struggle. I think it does have you know, some potential here. It's not rolling over it's not back at the recent lows it's trying to hang in here even though like USO is closer to its 52 week lows XLE is holding up it looks like this little double bottom that got put in below $60 is trying to hold I think again if you can get this back above 69.30 or so you could get a nice pop here and maybe things start to rotate a little bit better into the sector but for now it's still just kind of sitting out here doesn't look too interesting just just yet it's just consolidating and it's getting tight so we want to see how this one breaks xlu another one that just isn't very inspiring it's just range bound not doing a whole lot uh, compared to other things like the xlk which is near its highs industrials breaking through resistance so a lot of these other sectors and it's basically you know everything else is at least neutral to slightly bullish there i think xle and xlu are the only ones that really are kind of stand out not performing right now so that's sort of where i stand on the sectors and now if we look at some individual names we'll run through them apple uh still sideways again still i think there's better long setups out there it looks very comfortable just kind of going sideways until given another reason to sort of move a, a catalyst or something to give it some energy right now but uh, it just doesn't seem that very interesting to me google this is one that would look very constructive this is where you want to be focusing on your long names it's been in an uptrend tough to get on board these because you do have to chase but it is trending higher nicely it's at all time close to all time highs google looks good Netflix, uh, amazon the same thing trending higher tough you have to chase it you either have to be involved or you have to just buy up and, and get involved in this trend it is near all-time highs as well above all the fast moving averages looks really constructive netflix very close to all-time highs again it broke through this resistance which we were watching for quite some time so it did consolidate for a few months here and now it's sort of off to the races again looking really good uh next we'll look at facebook consolidating this is great if you're bullish you want to get involved in this name again uh looking good it, it, it since it's been cooling off i think you are getting a little more of an actionable potential entry here if we can start to clear these recent highs maybe you know above this area 107 to 108 uh that might signal that it's ready to start trending higher again and start making new all-time highs so facebook's one i would keep on watch twitter 
not as constructive you can see here it is trying to hold this area um, right around $25 but again this is still very much neutral to probably bearish here if you look at it from the longer term time frame because we are trending lower on the longer term charts uh, but as long as it can hold at least above 25 and not start ma and not make new uh, trending lows here I think you might have something to work with I think you really just need to sit and wait ideally we'd get back above $28 that's when it starts to get a little more interesting on the long side Tesla starting to hold in here you can see uh, this does look like it really wants to hold in here this 208 area you can see it tested it multiple times now it's trying to work back above this 235 area so this is sort of that short term range that you're in uh, about 25 points or so so let's see if it can hold and that's in the context of a larger you know 80 point range from you know 185 to, to 270 or, or thereabouts so Tesla uh, is is you know, trying to start to, to get a little constructive, but still in a messy area. GoPro, some signs of life here as it tested below $19. You can see it tried to break back below this um, again, and it held. Uh, but again, the fast moving averages are all racing lower. We're not really seeing any change of character. You need a strong impulse breakout bar to the upside to maybe start to signal that this is in fact a short term bottom. I think you're still uh, in a dangerous place with GoPro. It has been beaten up. Maybe we see some type of squeeze bounce here into the end of the year, just given how much uh, we've pretty much probably capitulated. 90% uh, of people out of this name so uh, we'll have to see what GoPro looks like heading into the end of the year Alibaba this one starting to pick itself back up made a higher low here at $76 been in a strong uptrend uh, this one looks constructive the trend has changed um, and uh, this one looks like it's pretty good on the long side now if we get into some individual names for some trade ideas, Herbalife is the first. You can see it's back to the top end of this range. It's been consolidating nicely for multiple months now. And uh, you can see it did. it's showing some signs of uh, exhaustion up here. So maybe it's not ready just, just yet. Uh, maybe a pullback here to the midpoint, make a higher low, and then a break back above $59 or so could signal that this one's ready to squeeze back to the upside. Next is CCE. This one you can see very clear resistance right around 52, 51.75 or so. It's challenging that level right now. You can see on a weekly chart what this looks like. We had a strong impulse back here in August. Then it consolidated sideways for several months. Now it looks like it's trying to get going again. So this one looks pretty constructive on multiple time frames. Microsoft is the next. This one's holding up pretty well. Had this big gap up here late in October. It's going to be consolidating nicely for quite some time now. Fast moving average is caught up. See if this one can start to break back above. 5450 or so maybe that one continues into the end of the year AVGO the semiconductors which uh, have been looking pretty good across the board recently this one's getting back into this uh, prime resistance area right here right around 130 if you look at a weekly chart you can see uh, this level has played some importance dating all the way back to earlier this year uh, we had this brief kind of stunt above here and then it quickly rolled over and it kept finding resistance right around 130 or so so maybe on this longer term trade you could start to see something uh, emerge here from AVGO if it can start to clear back above this band around 130 and then finally in that same camp BRCM for those of you who are on my newsletter uh, you know this was my favorite idea last week it had a nice 2% up week this week it's clearing above 53 you know this area right here 5350 5375 looking real good on all time frames I really like BRCM uh, so definitely keep that one on watch and that is what I have for this week so uh, again if you're not on the newsletter do subscribe traders.com forward slash join or just head to the traders.com you'll find uh, multiple spots to get on that list and otherwise thank you for watching I will catch you guys next week